Welcome to this virtual Monday Thursday worship. On this day, we together gather with Christians all around the world to begin what is known as the Tridium, or the Three Days, during which we participate once again in the saving power of Jesus' passing over from death to life. At the heart of Monday Thursday liturgy is Jesus' commandment to love one another. As Jesus washed the feet of his disciples, we're called to follow his, his example as we humbly care for one another, especially the poor and the unloved. At the Lord's table, we remember Jesus' sacrifice of his life, even as we are called to offer ourselves in love for the life of the world. My brothers and sisters in Christ, during this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and one another. This is the struggle to which we were called at baptism. And with the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving us peace and reconciliation. On this day, let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor allowing us to enter the celebration of the great three days reconciled with what God and with one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we do not love our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake. God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I de declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
A reading from Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. A reading from 1 Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of, of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. And then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet also, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him, and for his, this reason he said, 
not all of you are clean. After he washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you should also do what I have done to you. Well, very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed to do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. O oh, little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. And by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Seminary professor and author Fred Craddock told about something that happened while he was driving across country. He stopped at a small diner somewhere in the south for an early breakfast and some coffee. Now he'd been driving through the night and now it was getting close to dawn and he was frankly getting a little sleepy. Well, as he waited for his breakfast order to come, Craddock saw a black man who had just come in and he sat down on a stool up by the lunch counter. Now this diner's manager then began to treat this man with a contempt clearly born out of deep-seated racism. The manager was rude, he was insulting, he was demeaning toward his black guest. Well, as Craddock sat in his little booth a little bit, bit away from the counter, Craddock wrestled with the idea of saying something to the manager. In the meanwhile, the black man quickly slurped down his coffee and fled out into the darkness. But Craddock remained silent. Didn't say anything, he confessed. Quietly paid my bill. I left the diner and headed back to my car. But as I walked through the parking lot, somewhere in the distance, I heard a rooster crow. Well, one Sunday, Fred Craddock was a guest preacher at a church, and he preached a sermon with that very story in it. And after the service, a man came up to him in the narthex, shook Craddock's hand vigorously and said, Thank you, Pastor. What a powerful sermon. That really hit home. Oh, by the way, what's the whole business with the rooster? Well, you and I, we know the business with the rooster, right? Where Simon Peter hears a rooster crow and he remembers Christ's words to him, I tell you the truth, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And then Peter wept. You know, nothing happened that Monday, Thursday evening that had gone as Simon Peter expected. It was just before the Passover feast. The disciples had gathered with their master for a meal. And of course, they didn't know at that time it would be the last meal they would have together before his crucifixion. And then suddenly, without warning, the master got up from the meal, took off all of his outer clothing, wrapped a towel around his waist. He poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with that same towel that he had around his waist. We got to Simon Peter, and Peter was frankly confused. He said, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus replied, you don't know, realize now what I'm doing, but later you'll understand. No, 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 Peter protested. You'll never wash my feet. Then Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Well, then, Lord, Peter, Peter replied with this customary bravado, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. 
that later in the evening, Jesus announced that one of them would betray him. And then, of course, right after that, Judas fled the room. Then Jesus, Jesus said to them, My children, I will only be with you a little while longer. You'll look for me, and as I told the Jews, I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. But a new command I give you, to love one another. Just as I have loved you, so must you love one another. For by this, all men will know that you are my disciples, that is, if you love one another. And Peter asked him, well, Lord, where are you going? And Jesus replied, well, where I am going, you cannot follow now, but you will follow later. And Peter asked, Lord, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. And Jesus essentially replied, really? Really, will you really lay down your, your life for me? Because I tell you the truth, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. Ah, poor Simon Peter. No one experienced more of the ups and downs of being a disciple of Jesus Christ than Simon Peter. It was he of whom the Master said, On this rock I will build my church. And yet it was he who denied the Master. I wonder if Simon Peter grasped the full significance of what was happening when Christ began to wash the, the feet of the disciples. I mean, in no other religion could such an event even be imagined. Well, later on, the writer of Philippians would try to do justice to the event. He wrote, quote, Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who, being in the very nature of God, did not, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but he made himself nothing, taking on the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself to become obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and, and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. God. God with a towel around his waist. God with a basin of water kneeling in front of humble fishermen or tax collectors and other ordinary common folk. God doing the work of a servant. God washing feet. He said to them, do you understand what I have done for you? I you, know, you call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. But now that I, your Lord and your teacher, have washed your feet, you also should go out and wash one another's feet. I've done this as an example to you that you should do just as I have done for you. You know, a ceremony of washing feet can be a powerful experience. But really, that's, that's not the real focus of Christ's teaching. The real focus here is that we should be one another's servant. I mean, that's Christ's will for us, that we should love one another and serve one another just as Christ has served us. You know, a um, number of years ago, there was an article, in, uh, a rather scathing article in a theological magazine about the late Albert Schweitzer, you know, the missionary. The author of the article attacked Schweitzer's theology as dated and obsolete, and the man himself as rather muddle-headed, misguided, off-center concerning the fundamental teachings of the New Testament. However, toward the end of the article, he paused to say, he said, well, perhaps we should not judge Schweitzer by his word, but by his deeds, not by his books, but by his Christian discipleship, not by his theological conceptions, but by the fact he took up Christ's cross 
carried it to Africa, and he did not lay it down. You know, Peter didn't always say the right thing. Peter didn't always do the right thing. Well, what Peter did was he took up Christ's cross, the cross of servanthood. Do you understand what I have done for you? Jesus asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, for that is rightly so, for that is what I am. But, and now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do just as I have done for you. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you came into Jerusalem on a donkey as God's humble peacemaker, not like a conquering king on horseback. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord Jesus Christ, you emptied yourself, taking the form of a slave and being obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord Jesus Christ, you come even to us with your passion, your suffering, your death-defeating love. You bid us, likewise, to bear one another's burdens. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Come to those among us and visit all with your compassion, love, and healing. And silently we lift up all in need of your grace. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Be with those who have special needs known only to you, that they may hear your guiding voice at this time. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. The saints who have finished their course on earth still shine upon us like lights from above when we gather to worship in your sanctuary. We thank you for their example, love, and inspiration. We expect to be with them again. We now silently remember your children who have died in you. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me and are so far from my cry and from the words of my distress? Oh, my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer. By night as well, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our forefathers put their trust in you. They trusted, and you delivered them. They cried out to you, and were delivered. They trusted in you, and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord, let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, if he delights in him. 
Yet you are he who took me out of the womb and kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many young bulls encircle me, strong bulls abash and surround me. They open wide their jaws at me, like a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water, all my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting wax. My mouth is dried out like a potsherd, my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. And you have laid me in the dust of the grave. Packs of dogs close me in, and gangs of evildoers circle around me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all of my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. Be not far away, O Lord. You are my strength. Hasten to help me. Save me from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, my wretched body from the horns of wild bulls. I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. Stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel, all you of Jacob's line, give glory. For he does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty, neither does he hide his face from them. But when they cry to him, he hears them. My praise of him is in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall meet, eat, and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. At the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him, my descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done.